politics has banished religion from public discourse, but religion still offers the best description of political reality. The essence of political struggle is actually spiritual, a cosmic battle between God and Satan for the soul of man. The struggle is between an international financial elite, dedicated to Satan, led by the Illuminati, and the remnants of humanity that still uphold God's plan. The unsuspecting masses, inhabit a fool's paradise, like children. This struggle is not between nations, religions, or between ideologies of left or right. This occult elite creates and controls both sides of every conflict in order to obscure and at the same time, advance its long-term agenda. The elite plan is to remake the Earth as its private neo-feudal preserve. This involves the reduction of the world's population through plague, catastrophe or war, mind control or breeding of the survivors as serfs, and the elevation of Lucifer as God. A cataclysm could happen within the next 5 to 15 years. We're living on borrowed time, duped by the media, and distracted by sex, while the elite tests and imposes various methods of manipulation and control. Thousands of organizations, like the UN promote the elite's world government agenda, with practically no public scrutiny. More recently, the elite instigated the 9-11's attacks in order to justify their war on terror, the Repressive Patriot Act, and Iraq War. The flooding of New Orleans, vaccinations, and the bird flu epidemic, power blackouts, or other tests are possible harbingers. They established a seed bank on a remote Norwegian island in case of nuclear war. Now, the pandemic. Sophisticated and dedicated people roll their eyes when told about this conspiracy. They are hypnotized by their education and the mainstream media. The Illuminati sounds fantastic, but it is not a chimera. Hidden within Freemasonry, it is the Church of Satan. Its membership was known, its premises were raided. Plans and correspondence were seized and published. At formal inquiries, defectors testified to the grave danger. It was suppressed but went underground. It has since grown so powerful that it has literally defined the modern age, under the guise of progress, reform and revolution, and now threatens the future of humanity. Before I continue the video, please smash that like button for me. Thank you. The term Illuminati means enlightened ones and refers to Lucifer, the light bringer. Its essential philosophy is to substitute reason for what was called right reason, in other words, universal morality. Do as thou wilt or tolerance was the Freemason Illuminati motto. The Illuminati will define reality, not God or nature. Illuminism or humanism is a secular religion and a transition to Satanism. The decline of public decency makes this increasingly apparent. Look for the world to increasingly resemble the game Grand Theft Auto or a Hollywood horror or disaster movie. Whether it's a plant, a dog or a child, given a little nourishment and love, each will flourish according to an innate design. The Illuminati wishes to unplug us from this inherent design by promoting dysfunction in such guises as sexual liberation and equality. In 1770, Mayor Rothschild hired the 22-year-old Adam Weishaupt, a university instructor, to attract the cream of European society to a secret cult designed to reverse the course of Western civilization. I am referencing Final Warning, an online book by David Allen Rivera and James Wardner's excellent book, Unholy Alliances. The Illuminati was founded May 1, 1776. Weishaupt wrote. The great strength of our order lies in its concealment, let it never appear in any place in its own name, but always covered by another name and another occupation. None is fitter than the three lower degrees of Freemasonry, the public is accustomed to it, expects little from it, and therefore takes little notice of it. An understanding was reached with the Masons at the Congress of Wilhelmsbad on December 20, 1781, to add the Illuminati hierarchy to the first three degrees of Masonry. On returning home, Comte de Verrieux, a Mason from the Martinist Lodge at Lyons, reported. I can only tell you that all this is very much more serious than you think. The conspiracy which is being woven is so well thought out that it will be impossible for the monarchy and the church to escape it. Nesta Webster in her book, World Revolution, describes the modus operandi of the Illuminati. It applies to Adolf Hitler as well as Timothy Leary. The art of Illuminism lay in enlisting dupes, as well as adepts, and by encouraging the dreams of honest visionaries, or the schemes of fanatics, by flattering the vanity of ambitious egotists, by working on unbalanced brains, or by playing on such passions as greed and power, to make men of totally divergent aims serve the secret purpose of the sect. The Illuminati also used bribes of money and sex to gain control of men in high places, and then blackmailed them with the threat of financial ruin, public exposure or assassination. This continues to the present day. Weishaupt wrote. One must speak sometimes in one way, sometimes in another, so that our real purpose should remain impenetrable to our inferiors. 
And what was that purpose? It was nothing less than to win power and riches, to undermine secular or religious government, and to obtain the mastery of the world. The first priority was to enlist writers, publishers and educators. The modern pantheon of great thinkers, from Darwin, to Nietzsche, to Marx, were Illuminati pawns or agents. Of one university, Weishaupt wrote. All the professors are members of the Illuminati, so will all the pupils become disciples of Illuminism. As the order spread throughout Germany, money was contributed from such leading Jewish families as the Oppenheimers, Wertheimers, Schusters, Spares, Stearns and of course, the Rothschilds. Gerald B. Winrod wrote in his book, Adam Weishaupt. A human devil of the 39 chief sub-leaders of Weishaupt, 17 were Jews. From Bavaria, the order of the Illuminati spread like wildfire, soon they had over 300 members from all walks of life, including students, merchants, doctors, lawyers, judges, professors, civil officers, bankers, and even church ministers. Some of their more notable members were, the Duke of Orleans, Duke Ernst Augustus of saxe weimar coburg gotha Prince Charles of Hesse-Kassel, Johann Gottfried von Herder, Count Clemens von Metternich, Catherine II of Russia, Count Gabriel de Mirabeau, Marquis of Constanza, Duke Ferdinand of Brunswick, Duke Karl August of saxe weimar Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Joseph II of Russia, Christian VII of Denmark, Gustav III of Sweden, and King Poniatowski of Poland. By the time of the Third Masonic Congress in Frankfurt in 1786, the Illuminati virtually controlled all the Masonic lodges, which represented three million secret society members across the various German provinces, Austria, Hungary, England, Scotland, Poland, France, Belgium, Switzerland, Italy, Holland, Spain, Sweden, Russia, Ireland, Africa, and America. In the 1790s there was an Illuminati scare in the United States. At Charlestown, in 1798, the Reverend Jedediah Morse preached. Practically, all the civil and ecclesiastical establishments of Europe have already been shaken to their foundations by this terrible organization, the French Revolution itself is doubtless to be traced to its machinations. In 1832, William Russell established a chapter of the Illuminati at Yale, called the Skull and Bones. President G.W. Bush, his father, and John Kerry, are members. On September 9, 1785, Joseph Otschneider, a lawyer, and two other defectors, revealed the Illuminati goals before a court of inquiry in Bavaria. Abolition of the monarchy and all order government, abolition of private property, which the Illuminati will assume, abolition of patriotism, or nations, family, through the abolition of marriage, morality, and by government, providing education for children, and finally, abolition of all religion, particularly Christianity. These are exactly the goals of communism, enunciated by Marx in 1848. The Illuminati and communism go hand in glove. The term Reds originates with Red Shield, the Rothschild name. In 1794, the Duke of Brunswick issued a manifesto based on confiscated Illuminati documents. He said, the ferment that reigns among the people is their work. They began by casting odium on religion. They invented the rights of man and urged the people to wrest from their princes the recognition of these opposed rights. The plan they formed for breaking all social ties and destroying all order was revealed in their speeches and acts. They deluged the world with a multitude of publications, they recruited apprenticeships of every rank and every position, they deluded the most perspicacious men by falsely alleging different intentions. Mankind has taken a wrong turn and appears doomed. The political, cultural, and economic elite are either dupes or willing agents of a satanic conspiracy of cosmic proportions. If we and our children are to suffer and die prematurely, at least we will know the real reason. That is a privilege not granted to millions of our ancestors. God and Satan made a wager for the soul of man. If God wins, man revels in the glory of his divine birthright. If Satan wins, man is destroyed. In a nutshell, this is the religious nature of politics. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.